Hello, my name is Stephen Preston and welcome to this presentation on AutoCAD Longbow migration and new APIs. This presentation was part of the ADN Developer Days conference tour in 2013 and was presented at various locations around the world as part of that tour. Before we proceed, if you're watching this presentation before AutoCAD Longbow or AutoCAD 2015, as it will be called, has shipped, please remember that this is confidential information. It's covered by your ADN Master Agreement. And please make sure that anyone you share this information with inside your company, that you only share it with people who need to know the information. And if you do share it, please make sure that they understand that this is confidential so they don't inadvertently tell somebody um, who isn't covered by a confidentiality agreement. And of course, because this recording is made before AutoCAD Longbow ships, um, what we present here may change slightly in the shipping version of AutoCAD. So let's get on with the presentation. As usual, we're going to base our presentation on the usual rice and wine format. So the rice is the your staple diet, if you like. It's the basics you have to do to get your code to work in the next release of AutoCAD. And the wine is the luxury item. It's the new APIs that you can use to uh, add significant value to your current applications. So let's start first of all with migration. And this slide here is it really is just a summary of everything you need to know about migrating your application to AutoCAD Longbow. Uh, so first of all, it's a binary incompatible release. That means that AutoCAD is being compiled with a different Visual C++ compiler than the previous version. We're actually using Visual Studio 2012, uh, which means we're using VC11 and .NET Framework 4.5. Uh, and actually, the, the AutoCAD Longbow Beta 1 was built with Visual Studio 2012 Update 3 and the next beta will be Visual Studio 2012 Update 4 although we have found in our own testing that the actual updates don't really seem to make it don't make a difference to the actual uh, binary compatibility and of course because it is a binary incompatible release for this year we've incremented the major version number from 19 to 20 so if you have any code that accesses values in the registry for a particular version of AutoCAD or if you're using Autoloader then you need to update the that version number accordingly even though it's a binary incompatible release the DWG format has remained unchanged so you don't have to worry about changes in that format and also you may have noticed that Microsoft have announced that they're dropping support for Windows XP next April, and which is quite nice for our release of AutoCAD, of course, at the end of March. So we too are dropping Windows XP, which is actually the reason why we can support the .NET Framework 4.5. So what does it mean for your application? Well, if you're an Object RX developer, of course, you, you have no shielding at all from um, the, the compiler that's used to build AutoCAD itself. So you have to compile your object RX C++ DLLs using exactly the same Visual C++ compiler as AutoCAD uses, which means you do, as a minimum, have to recompile your application. And as I'll explain in a moment, you're almost certainly going to have to refactor some of your code as well. The JavaScript API, well, last release was the first release of the JavaScript API, and we, um, we've made quite a few changes, so you're going to have to refactor that code as well. .NET, you may get away with not having to recompile at all. However, there are some changes that have been made to the API. So if you actually use an API that has changed, you will definitely have to refactor your code and rebuild it. But if you haven't made any changes, then your existing .NET DLL should just work. And of course, with Lisp as well, um, as usual, Lisp remains completely compatible and it, it should work without problem, without any changes. However, having said that, um, we have made quite a lot of very significant changes inside AutoCAD, in the actual basic architecture of AutoCAD. Um, so it's very important for this release that you test your applications, even applications like Lisp applications, which you expect to stay compatible. You need to test them really carefully, particularly in areas where you're using ACED command or the command function in Lisp, or where you're dealing with handling with uh, document switching or, or accessing the, uh, the, the currently active document. Um, the reason for this is, is primarily because the work we've done this release to remove a very old technology called fibers from AutoCAD. And we, we've talked about fibers in pre 
previous developer days. Um, so I, I won't men discuss it here. Um, all you really need to know is that this is an old technology that Microsoft no longer supports. We've reworked AutoCAD um, to remove all of that, um, which has some good and some bad effects for you. Uh, so the good effect is really for, for .NET developers, which means that um, .NET has never recognized fibers because Microsoft stopped supporting it before .NET came along. So many of you will have had problems where Visual Studio either doesn't hit your breakpoints or if it does hit a breakpoint, it's unable to show you the code that it, that it, that it hit the breakpoint on. Uh, and, and when that happens, that's an indication that the .NET framework is getting confused because of our use of fibers. And, and so now we've removed fibers, that all should work perfectly. Uh, and also, this removal of fibers allows us to expose in .NET some APIs which previously weren't really safe to expose in .NET uh, because of this use of fibers. The, the best example of that is we, we now have in this release uh, a .NET wrapper for the ACED command function. Uh, the slightly bad side of this, particularly for C++ developers, is that any code where you use ACED command must be refactored, and I'll, I'll cover that in a moment. Uh, the, the other area you have to be careful is that the way AutoCAD switches documents has now changed very significantly. So in the past, if you started a command and left that command running and switched to a new document and then switched back to the document with a command running, the command would have been paused while you switch documents and then would have been uh, then would have continued from where it left off when you reactivated the document. However, now when you switch documents, a command is actually cancelled. Cancel is actually sent to the command line. So if you have any code that relies on keeping a command running while you move to another document, you're going to have to change that code. So let's have a look at the changes for Object ARX developers who use ACED command. And this is very much the, the largest change you're likely to have to make in your code. We now have two versions of ACED command. We have ACED command S and ACED command C. And the S stands for subroutine and C stands for coroutine. So subroutine behavior is where you invoke a complete command. So that might be where you, you start a, a line command, you pass in a start point, you pass in an end point, and you pass in a null string to terminate the command. You're not using any pauses, you're not leaving any commands hanging. In that situation, migration should be as simple as just, just putting an S on the end of ACED command. The coroutine version is where you may partially invoke a command or if you use the pause token to request user input. Um, and so that might be, for example, where you, you invoke a command, a line command, say, you send a start point, an end, po an end point, but then you don't terminate the command, you leave the command running to allow the user to specify additional points to add extra lines to to the drawing, or if you send a pause token to ask the user for input. In that situation, you now have to use a callback routine, and your code is going to look something like I'll show you in a moment. So this is an example of where you may have to use the coroutine version now, ACD command C. So your old code may have looked like this. You start a line command, you send in a start point, you send in an end point. You're not sending a termination string, and so the command stays active, and then we just have this while loop here. This is just a helper function, which we've not listed. But while the command's active, we're just sending pause tokens to get the user to to select additional points until eventually they, they end a the command and the execution of the code runs to this uh, this line here, the acut printf line. This is how that same code might look now in uh, AutoCAD Longbow. You see we're having to, as we call ACED command, we're having to add a C to say we're using the coroutine, coroutine version of ACED command. Um, you also have to provide this callback function. So you're passing in a callback function and then you're essentially passing in the same code as before here. We're starting a line, we have a start point, we have an end point, and we're not terminating the line. And now, of course, when control is passed back from AutoCAD to your function, AutoCAD is actually, instead of just coming to the next line of code in your, in your function, it actually will call your callback routine instead. And of course, that this callback routine is then run, and we have exactly the same code here, where we keep invoking ACD command C, passing in the function passes in itself as its callback function, and we just keep passing pause tokens. And this repeats and repeats and repeats until the command is terminated, at which point we um, we terminate the command and move on to this piece of code here. 
So that's going to create a significant amount of migration work for you if you use ACED command with coroutine behavior. In fact, it's so much migration work that you might consider instead moving to the new .NET version of ACED command. So I already mentioned document switching. Uh, so this is just a little bit more information about that. Um, the, the, the two areas of document switching, first of all, if you switch your documents during a command, the command is cancelled. But the second issue you have to look at is because of a new API, which I'll discuss later, it's possible that when you query the MDI active document property or the, the cur document property in, in, in an object ARX, that may now return null. And so you need to check for this. You need to check that the return document is not null before you try and do something with it. The most likely, this isn't very likely to happen in a, a normal modal command. It's most likely to happen in places like event handlers, modalist dialogues, and palettes. Another area of migration for you, which is more of an optional area really, is the, the user interface modernization. We have this new dark theme to AutoCAD Longbow. Um, so instead of having the light background to all of our ribbon bars and toolbars, we have this darker background and lighter icons. If you want to um, adopt that look and feel, you you may want to refactor your UI so that it looks good in the dark theme. Now what we've actually done, the AutoCAD team, is we try to design icons that look good in both the dark and the light theme. So we only have to support one set of icons. You might like to look into doing that yourself. Uh, other areas affected are you've got the ribbon, obviously, um, the icons in the ribbons, WPF palettes. Um, there is an opt-out available, um, but you need to be careful when you're using it. If you set this registry key, AutoCAD will adopt the light theme until you remove that registry key. So obviously you have to be careful because a user is not going to be happy if they run your application once and it leaves that registry setting and they can't work out how to get back to the light theme. And because of this UI modernization work, we're also changing a lot of the old MFC application framework components into WPF. And so all the old MFC APIs that, that were previously accessing UI elements that have changed to WPF, they obviously don't work anymore. And a good example of this is the status bar API. That used to return a C status bar object, which was an MFC class. So now instead we have a .NET API that's replaced it. So we have an Autodesk AutoCAD status bar namespace. And finally, a note for Object ARX developers. And again, this is an optional migration element. Um, but AutoCAD, the AutoCAD team have now started compiling AutoCAD using Microsoft's band.h header file. And you can find more information about that if you just go and search for band.h on MSDN. Um, so all, all we're saying here is that we recommend that you do the same. Band.h just pr throws a compilation error if you use one of the old unsafe C or C++ functions, for example. Um, you know, one of the old string copy functions. Um, and it will it'll throw an ex uh, a compiler error to force you actually to move to the new um, the new versions of the functions which are safe from things like buffer over and attack. So we, we strongly recommend that you, you incorporate that into your own projects. So that's it for the, the migration part. Uh, let's move on to the new APIs. And the first question you may be asking is, um, as we go through this, is what's happened to all the sample demos which you usually show at Dev Days? Well, we didn't have a lot of time this year at Dev Days to present all the information. So instead of going through the samples here, we've actually posted them on the ADN Extranet with the PowerPoints and the other material from these uh, the Dev Days presentations. You'll find them under the event section on the ADN Extranet. And as we're creating more samples, we're adding more and more samples to that section. And of course, once we, we reach FCS, we'll be posting those on our dev blogs as well. So go along to the event section to download those samples. So the first new API, which I mentioned before, is the .NET versions of uh, ACED command. And there are two versions, of course, the, the subroutine version or the, the synchronous version, if you like, of edit, editor.command. And you can see a usage example here. We just call editor.command and we pass in an array of strings, which in, is the same example as before. We start a line, pass in two points, and we terminate the line. 
Then we also have the version of the, the coroutine behavior, which is editor command async. And this uses the new .NET Framework 4.5 async and await keywords. And essentially all you have to do is mark a function as asynchronous, which means you can then use the await keyword within it. And the await keyword, if you like, is a way of setting a bookmark in your function that the .NET Framework knows where it should return code execution to in your DLL after it has re re received a callback from an asynchronous event. So in, in this case, we're invoking a circle command, so we're giving control to the AutoCAD editor. And when the AutoCAD editor returns control to us, it start, because of this await keyword here, it just starts executing the next line of code. Then we send a pause token and the same thing happens. We pass control to AutoCAD and AutoCAD sends control back again when it's finished, when the user's picked a point, uh, back to our next line of code and we can carry on like that. And you can see that this is a lot simpler than the, the callback mechanism implemented in Object ARX. There is a, a callback system implemented for this as well. Actually, uh, event handlers you can you can um, respond to to events as commands are uh, are invoked using editor command. Um, but we we recommend you use a wait and async method. Next new API is the reason why the MDI Active document may now return null. We, we have a new document window class and the best example of this is when you start up AutoCAD Longbow um, in the, zero doc, the old zero document state you now have this, this dashboard which is a little picture of it here. You, you have this dashboard control that allows you to do various things uh, and this is a, an example of the new non-DWG document window and and so this this new type of document it's stored in the, the application document window collection but it's not stored in the applicant um, application document collection because the document collection is purely the, the DWG documents and that's why the MDI active document could return null if either the dashboard or a non-DWG document that you have created yourself is actually the current document at the time you query that. And this is potentially very powerful because, for example, one of the constructors for this new document class accepts uh, uh, an HTML file and it will display the, the, the HTML file in the document by default if you just pass it into the constructor. And that HTML, of course, could be JavaScript enabled and that JavaScript could call the AutoCAD JavaScript API. So you potentially have a very powerful new user interface mechanism which can be integrated in with AutoCAD and actually controlling AutoCAD from this document type. Next we have autoloader enhancements. Now, if you've not used Autoloader yet in your application deployments, you, you really should take a look. It's been it's been available now since AutoCAD 2012, and we've been enhancing it every release with new features. And it really does simplify deploying your applications. Instead of having to do lots of complicated queries of the registry to work out which versions and language versions and AutoCAD verticals are installed and, and putting your demand load settings there via your installer, which is extremely complicated, um, you just have to copy the Autoloader a bundle we call it into a particular loc a particular folder on your hard drive and AutoCAD will automatically load your application for you. So this release um, we've added additional support for creating unique registry values, creating new sys files as part of your applications and setting environment variables. Uh, we've extended our support for various WPF user controls and we've also uh, now allow you to include JavaScript and VBA modules as part of your autoloader application. And talking of JavaScript, uh, this is now the second year's release um, of that API. Um, we, we did, we, we have learned some lessons from the, the version one release, if you like, and um, we've applied those lessons and taken advantage of a binary compatibility break to, to make improvements of that API, particularly around the way um, that multiple scripts can run and also handling the fact that um, the JavaScript code is running asynchronously to AutoCAD. Um, so I think the notable, the really notable in, uh, enhancement here. So first of all, we have a, a, a built-in WebKit debugger now. So if you um, have 
of your mouse over an active palette, which, for example, ha has an H JavaScript enabled HTML loaded into it, you just have to hit F12 and you'll automatically be displayed a debugger, which will, will help you debug the AutoCAD JavaScript code. Uh, the, the other big enhancement is probably the stability enhancement, which is that now we run each JavaScript script in a separate executable, a separate web browser executable, so that you can more easily debug individual scripts. And, and one, one script, of course, freezing doesn't completely freeze every single JavaScript that's running. We have some other new APIs, and, and we actually devote a lot of time to small bug fixes and API enhancements this release. Uh, we, we, we had a senior AutoCAD engineer who, who devoted a significant amount of his time for this release just going through a hit list of, of things to uh, to fix and improve. Um, but because there were lots of small things, there, there's really too many small things to list here. So make sure you have a look at the, the What's New section of the Object ARX documentation when it becomes available. Um, but some notable uh, larger ones, if you like, we have now programmatic access to recover and audit that was always a real complaint from from ADN partners but to it to recover a document programmatically before you would have to invoke a recover command which would display dialogues which you you had to poke windows messages at autocad in order to to remove the dialogues and now instead you have a very simple api which doesn't invoke the ui at all uh, same for audit um, then we have in net we have a a per document data attribute. So what this does, if you specify a class as per document class, as a per document class, um, let's say your application loads on command invocation when there's already 10 documents open in AutoCAD, um, AutoCAD will automatically instantiate you know, one instance of your per document class for each of the already open documents. And of course, for every new document you open after the application is loaded, it will instantiate a, a, a new version of your class. So it's just a nice, easy way of, of having per document data in your application. We have uh, a, a new SysVar iterator, which now allows you to, to iterate through all of the public SysVars and, and access all of the information about them. Um, we have a new WPF color data binding class. We have a new object ARX class for the uh, for point cloud functionality, and that really encapsulates all of the new point cloud functionality. Most of the functionality available from the user interface is actually a point cloud, point cloud reactor, and point cloud definition class. In a similar way to we have um, the, the raster image classes, the, the, the same um, design pattern is being used there. So as I said before, look on the ADN Extranet for samples under the events section, and we have most of them there already, and we're adding new ones all the time. And finally, um, just a quick look at the timeline. So uh, beta 1 is already available on the ADN Extranet. That was released in early December. Beta 2, um, I'm recording this presentation on January the 2nd, so that should be available within the next week or so. And then we have a release candidate should be available in February, and then the first customer ship, as usual, will be available in late March. And of course, if you have um, apps on the exchange store, please do think about migrating those as soon as possible so that you're ready to take advantage of the, uh, the new product launch to, to advertise your, your application uh, to some new customers. And a reminder again, this is confidential information, so please don't share this outside of your company. And the presentation, along with this recording, actually are on the ADN Extranet under the events section. Thank you very much for listening and Good luck with your application migration.